We have a guest tonight, and his name, I think, is Stephen Sindoni, but he might be Stefan Sindoni. I'm not sure. He's going to tell me. He is, you could say he's an explorer. He explores unsolved mysteries, ancient civilizations. He's got a very curious mind, and he loves making videos, and he's got a website with hundreds of videos where he explains things to you that he's discovered about these ancient mysteries. I thought he was living in a tent on the side of Mount Shasta, and I guess he was at one point. So I welcome to the show, as our guest, Stephen Sindoni. How are you, Stephen? Thank you, Gordon. Yes, I did yes. live off the side of a mountain, proud to say so. I came back to New York. My mom was dying and my brother, and I came back to be care providers for both of them, and they're both now crossed over. So that was one of the reasons that brought me back to the East Coast. But in the process, I've been continuously doing research on a number of different topics. And tonight, i like to discuss one of your topics, which would be ETs, the possibility of life on this planet other planets with other type of extraterrestrial beings. Well, I'm really glad that you came on. You said you hadn't listened to my show before. I call myself, the whole general topic of my show is extraterrestrial contact with planet Earth. And I usually try and break things into four areas. Disclosure of the presence of ETs, pole shift, dimensional change for the Earth, where we will uh, become fourth dimensional and we'll have all these unselfish ET friends that are on the fourth dimension, we'll be able to see them and interact with them. And then the fourth topic is the new race. So you've got disclosure of ETs, you've got pole shift, you've got dimensional change, and then you have the new race of humans that will be living here. And they're, they're us. They're, we're going to reincarnate into them. If we want to stay on Earth and we, we can reincarnate, we'll reincarnate into those bodies. So when you told me that you had a transcendental experience involving a an Indian sweat lodge. I guess that was out west, but I'm not sure. So uh, tell us about that. And as a result of that, you came in contact with Zetas? Yes, I was up to Tacoma, Washington. I was going to be investigating reports of tall ones and giants and extraterrestrials starting from Mount Rainier, working my way all the way back to Mount Shasta, part of my research. And as I went to Tacoma, Washington, I met tribal members from, I guess, the Puyallup tribe and the Nisqually tribe, became friends with, and they invited me to a sweat lodge, Tacoma, Washington. And third round of the sweat lodge. Now that gets rather hot, but by the third round everybody was going into their, I'll say, vision quest or their dream state and I was no different. I went into mine and in that third round I saw in front of me an alien gray. He was short. He was probably about three and a half foot tall. Just the way they described it, they pictured him in movies, is what he looked like. He had the big eyes, the ant type head and immediately when he looked at me, I saw that he was probing me and I had a problem with that. At that point, opened my eyes and came back out of that dream state, excused myself from that third round of sweating there with the Native Americans who I was sweating with. I went out, had some Gatorade to replenish my fluids because I had lost a lot of water weight from sweating. And I didn't really say anything to anyone at that point. But after leaving, a friend of mine had asked me, why didn't I sweat all six rounds? I said, well, I would have. And I explained the story with the alien gray. So then I was talking to a native chief. And what he told me was, I'm supposed to tell you a story. And what the story basically was, was that when there was the flood in the deluge, the alien grays took the Native Americans in inner mountains in the earth and kept them there safe until the water subsided. And when the flood waters subsided, they then brought the Native Americans out to the face of the earth so that way they could live on the outside of the earth again. So he said that what I was experiencing Thing was one of the, what the, in biblical terms is called the watchers, and they were the watchers that helped the Native Americans get through that devastation in uh, the early days of the flood. So that was my experience with the alien greys and actually seeing one face to face. And they're on the fourth dimension and I can't normally see them, but I can talk to them telepathically. And I hear what they say and... Uh, they usually do things with pictures, but sometimes it just translates automatically into English. Now, they don't scare me at all, and I want you to know that they're 100% human. They came from a planet in Zeta Reticuli that they destroyed, but they already had some amazing science at that point, and they had space travel. And they felt guilty about their destroying the planet because of war and uh, industry and all the things we face today. And... They decided that they really didn't deserve to have a planet and they'd be better off if they just lived in space. But not simply just that, 
but they would use genetics to remove any sex organs and any emotions from any of them. And then they would clone themselves. That way they would be smaller and they wouldn't need as much nutrients. So they don't have a normal digestive system. They paint nutrients on their skin and that's how they feed themselves. And usually things like chlorophyll. So um, they decided to travel in space and uh, they came to Earth and they were told to study humans. Well, at first, be, being that they have no feelings, they would treat us like lab animals. And uh, people have memories of, of uh, being abducted, you could say. But from their point of view, our brain is like a bomb going off. We've got these different layers. And on the subconscious layer, we say, uh, I know love hurts, so how are you going to hurt me? On the conscious level, we say, you have no right to come through the wall and take me up to your spaceship, so I'm going to report you as soon as I can. And on the super conscious level, they say, we're all brothers and sisters, humans. They all say, we are your brothers and sisters. How can we help you? So from their point of view, they have to figure what level you're operating on. And very few people are operating on the super conscious level where they realize we're all equal parts of the creator and uh, we're working together. Well, I and think I think that you know, with, with the problem that I had within my vision quest is that I didn't feel like they had the permission to enter my space. Well, maybe they were already there. You didn't know it, but when you got a certain state of consciousness, you were able to see them. I mean, they are on the fourth dimension. So for you to see them, you had to be actual have vision on the fourth dimension. Well, that is exactly right. Yeah, I did. I did elevate to a higher plane. Right, and so they they came to Earth and they were studying humans. And the one thing they noticed is that our DNA and theirs matches one hundred percent. And then their cloning started to fail. So they go, "Oh, what are we going to do about that?" And then they realized that we were created to be defective by other extraterrestrials. And so they decided to create a hybrid human race. Now, they didn't do any of this by themselves. There's a group of over a thousand unselfish ET races, which are here now. There's over seven billion ETs here right now. And that's called the Council of Worlds. And they're part of the Council of Worlds. And so they decided to breed a new hybrid race for the fourth dimension that people on Earth would be born into. So after the dimensional shift, if you're reborn on Earth, you're going to live 400 years. You're going to uh, have an IQ of 300 plus, and you're going to be completely telepathic and be able to contact consciously any other living being in the universe. Now, they realize they made a mistake with cutting sex out of their lives because the question is not how bad of an experience can you have with sex and emotions and become violent or dangerous or uh, ruin everything on you know you've heard of all the seven deadly sins that people are susceptible to um, right. that, that, um, that that the, the, the issue wasn't that all sex is bad but bad sex is bad so they decided to um, find the most sensitive and caring and emotionally intelligent people on earth and uh, and breed a new race, half of them and half of theirs. So the new race will be able to have sex, they'll be able to be dating, they'll have arms and legs, they'll have eyes, they'll uh, look like slightly modernized, sleek human beings. And there are some of them that are in the third dimension and you might occasionally see them, especially where you are in New York City, you might actually see one of them on the street. Well, you know, you're exactly right. I did see one of them on the street about six months ago. I just turned around and I knew that they were, you know, they were ET, not of the standardized human that I come across with in everyday walk of life. Right, right. And so there are ETs walking around. There's my sign off.